Hello, and welcome to another little prospect rundown. Um, so over the last, well, three days, I've gone to three hockey games, and I kind of just wanted to talk about what my observations were in those games. So I went to two Ottawa 67s games on uh, Friday and Sunday, and I went to the Gatineau versus Baycomo game on Saturday. And let's start off with the OHL. So the Ottawa 67s, who are a team that I was not expecting to be good this year, they've been very impressive in my viewings, at least. I've watched what, three or four of their games, four. Um, I think they've gone three and one in those games. And like their, their, um, in terms of the standings in the OHL, again, they're, they're they're doing better than they probably should be, considering that they lost all of their top talent. Um, yeah, like they're they're third in the Eastern Conference with an eight and four record. I was expecting them to be bottom two, bottom three, and very impressive. Like they, as a team, it just kind of works better than it should, considering the level of talent that they have, which isn't bad. Like, they have Jack uh, Mattier, they have uh, wait, Jack Beck, um, who are both drafted and good. <laughs> um, though Beck, scoring a lot of goals, he's very much a power play merchant. Like, he, at even strength, he's not a very impactful player at either end of the ice. Um, in the last two games that I've watched, he's only really gotten one high danger scoring chance at even strength, uh, which was against the Peterborough Peets, which is a weaker team. And yeah, like on the power play, he's phenomenal. Like, like, like there's no discounting that. Like you watch on the power play, it, everything flows through him. Um, he disguises the shot really well into a pass. It's very impressive, but at even strength, I was never blown away by him. So, despite his amazing, I think he's second in the OHL in goals, which is phenomenal, but it's not utter dominance the entire game. Now, someone who is utterly dominant the entire game is Ty Nelson. Um, Ty Nelson is a player that, again, I haven't watched all the top talents in the league yet, but if he doesn't end up in my top 10 or as my top ranked defenseman, someone's going to have to really, really impress me to dislodge him from there because I love his game. Everything about his game I love. Uh, the 200-foot player, um, he, he'd especially impress me in transition. Like, either way, defensive transition or offensive transition. His skating is phenomenal, and it allows him to carry the puck up the ice. He gets zone entries at a very high rate from, from what I've seen. Uh, again, I'm not tracking any metrics here, but just from what I'm seeing and what I, I'm assuming that the metrics are going to look really good because it's a real skill that he has of getting the puck into the offensive zone with control. Um, this is especially notable on the power play where he just rushes it up the ice almost every time and gets it in like like it's nothing like it's it's it, he makes it look really easy and that's very impressive um and defensively he doesn't let anyone get by him in transition like he he really clogs up um at the at the defensive blue line and again i i just i, I love his play like I, 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 I was watching him all game yesterday i'm like and he was by far the best player on the ice, in, in my opinion. Like, I, Ottawa won the game 2-1 with, they got, had a penalty shot that was a goal with, like, four, no, like 30 seconds left in the game. But, yeah, like, Ty, like, like, the 67s deserved the win. They were a better team. But Ty Nelson was the best player on the ice. And I don't think it was rel it was even all that close. I think that just the way he skates just his constant impact on the game. You notice him every single time he's on the ice, and it's always in a good way. I think I, I must have made at least, like, 13 notes of him during the game of just, oh, this is amazing. He did this so well. 
the only thing that I think was negative, the only negative, like, note I took was on, like, a power play late. Yeah, like, the entire PP1 in the third period had a rough shift for North Bay for, like, a minute long, and he was a part of that. But, like, he played amazing. I, like, on the power play, he is the true quarterback of that first unit. Everything goes through him. Uh, he distributes the puck well. He's very deceptive with the puck. Um, he's on the second pa uh, penalty kill unit, and I thought that the second pen penalty kill unit actually did better than the first one, even when they were actually going up against Ottawa's top power play unit. I was just really, really, really impressed. I was watching him the entire game, and he, like, I see, I see his strengths really as a puck moving defenseman who is exceptionally strong defensively. I think you can put him on the power play, NHL power play, I easily. Like, I would not at all be worried about putting him on an NHL power play. Um, he he can do it basically, he can, he can basically just do it all and do it all very well, which is the key thing. Because if you have a player that's like just good at everything but doesn't stand out in any way, how does that translate to the NHL when bottom of the lineup players need to stand out in some way to get a leg up and make it onto a roster? Ty Nelson's not going to be one of those guys. He's he's going to be on a roster because he's really really good, um, very very impressive. It's it's probably the, like, that that performance was probably the most impressive game I've watched from any prospect so far this season. And. That's saying something. I, I've, I've watched Joaquin Kamel when he scored a goal and assist. Um, I've watched uh, Matthew Savoy. I've watched Shane Wright. I've watched... Yeah, I love Noah Warren, um, who isn't in that same tier as other guys, but I love him. But no one comes close to this game. It was exceptional. I... Yeah. Like, I don't... He's probably not going to be top five for me, but top ten... If 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 this, again, this is the second game I've only the second game I've watched from him. But it's less about like yes, he was consistent the entire game. But even if I start seeing inconsistencies from him, it's just this, the the abilities that he has that make him a top ten pick for me. And he showed that right. It's not a thing about me needing a bigger sample because I, I saw what he can do uh, against a pretty solid Ottawa team and just the puck moving the shot is also great um the intelligence the um transition defense the in zone de defense the stick work everything about it is phenomenal and just really really fun i, I really liked him um other players that stood out in that ottawa game uh, ottawa and north bay game um liam arms arnsby he's the north bay captain and he's draft eligible for his first year draft eligible, and he's already the, the captain. I thought he was really solid. He didn't get a goal or an assist. Uh, he's the centerman, and the first line centerman for uh, for North Bay. Um, though he's on the second pen, uh, power play unit, which will, will hurt his his point tallies as the season goes on, uh, because he's not on the same unit as Brendan Coe and um, Ty Nelson. But I liked his game a lot. Very high energy. Um, he got, I think, two or three high danger scoring chances. He got robbed a couple times. Very solid game. I just super hardworking, smart in the offensive zone, on the top penalty kill unit. Just really honest player that just gets it done. Like if he makes the NHL, I don't, I don't see him being a top six guy or anything. But as like a solid fourth line center that can pop up to the third line when need be. Yeah, like. I, I can see that. He has that work ethic and um, the talent level to succeed. So I, I, I liked his game. I wasn't blown away or anything, but I thought it was really solid. And um, apart from that, uh, okay, in terms of... Okay, so another player for North Bay was the goaltender, um, Dominic DiVincentis. He's the backup to Joker Bedek, a Habs prospect. Um, and he played in that game, and he was really, really solid. I, I was worried a little bit early on because he w just wasn't exuding confidence at all for the first minute or two. And I was uh, like, I, I was worried. I was like, well, maybe we'll actually end up seeing Verbetic play this game, which would have made me happy because I wanted to watch the Habs prospect. But 
Um, I thought I thought he was really solid. I mean, like he only conceded two goals on like forty shots. One of them was a penalty shot. So like, can you even count that? Um, yeah, he was very calm after that opening little bit, and I was impressed. So you never know with goalies, right? Like, I thought he was good. I thought his movement from like side to side was pretty smooth. I thought his positioning was okay. Um, like in contrast to Ottawa's goalie, uh, Will Cranley, whose position is a little bit awkward sometimes. But again, I'm not I'm not at all a, go a goaltending expert um, in terms of scouting. But both goalies played well, and North Bay's backup played very well. So <laughs> take that as you will. Um, and other players, so. Um, Matvey Petrov. This is a player that the Edmonton Oilers selected in the sixth round last year. He's, from, he's playing for North Bay. That's a good pick, Edmonton. He did well there. Like, he, 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 I mean, I think he has, like, 18 points or 16 points in 11 games or something, including, like, 9 or 10 goals. He, his wrister is really good. Um, very intelligent in the offensive zone. Not a factor in the D zone, but in the offensive zone, very intelligent of getting into good shooting lanes and uh, cutting inside, whether it be on the power play or even strength, and getting his wrister off from a relatively dangerous position, like a medium danger of scoring chance. And he can create that from basically nothing, which is pretty impressive. Um, I thought he played very well. He was very deceptive, and he had some nice passes to the slot in that game. So, yeah, I mean, for a sixth round draft pick, he's doing great. Um, and for in terms of Ottawa players, um, Luca Pinelli, who is a 2023 eligible player, he's he's been an interesting one because similarly to his brother Francesco, who is a phenomenal prospect, um, Luca Pinelli is not the best skater, but he's very intelligent, right? And for him, the, the thing that it kind of comes down to for me is his work rate. I think. Like, he kind of has, like, an on-off switch where he's either hustling super hard or he's just floating around and not being very impactful. And that has to change. He has he, he needs to um, find some kind of middle ground where it's sustainable. And, yeah, because the shifts where he's not hustling, he's pretty invisible and doesn't really do much. But when he is, he's great. Like, uh, he's been fun to watch. He... Um, he has great anticipation. Uh, I think he had like three or four takeaways in the game against North Bay. Um, he was impressive when he was on. He created some good scoring chances. Um, again, just very intelligent player. And yeah, so uh, someone to look out for. And uh, yeah, I mean, who who knows? Um, especially like with a player that's still a year away, a year and a half away from being drafted. He needs time, um, but he, he could be an interesting bet for like a second or third round pick in the 2023 draft, so just something to keep an eye on. And other players, so uh, Brady Stonehouse is one of my favorites for Ottawa, not because he's going to be a game breaker in the NHL, but because he's just really fun to watch. Not because of his skill, purely because of his, hot, his work ethic and grit. Like he has... His, his like, personality on the ice, like, his demeanor mirrors that of Brady Kachuk. It's that same, like, shit-eating grin and just <laughs> pettiness, and it's just really fun. Like, he, he really pisses off everyone that he plays against because, well, he's a little pest, right? And um, he was, for the first time, kind of invisible for the first like period and a half of the game and usually you always notice him because of his demeanor right like he, he sticks out and he's draft he, he's he's 17 right now so he, he's draft eligible for uh the upcoming draft and then he just decided okay i've been invisible all game i'm gonna not be invisible anymore and he just takes the puck off the rush he just like hustles hard, he make he, he forces it, the play into a two on one, and he just shoots. It's saved, but he just slams home the rebound, and 
uh, it goes five hole and yeah, like it just worked. And that was just fun to see because he's a player I just, how I've just enjoyed a lot over the last month or so. And it was, it was nice to see him pot a goal because he, I don't think he's many points this season, but he's really fun. Like he really is. And yeah, I, I, I like him a lot. And I think that does it for that game. I'm going to move on to the other 67th game that I watched, which was against the Peterborough Peets. And I think I already covered a lot of what I was going to say on that, just because I like my comments on Ottawa. But yeah, one more Ottawa player I kind of wanted to talk about is uh, Vincent Rohrer, or Rohrer, as we'd say in German. Um, he is an interesting one, because he, he very clearly has a high skill level, and he almost looks similar to Marco Rossi, who was a childhood friend of his growing up. Like, they, I don't know, just like the way that they just move around the eye. And not really the way they play, but just when he's skating by, it's like, that looked a lot like Marco Rossi to me. Okay. Um, but he's not Marco Rossi. He he is very skilled. His issue is being consistently impactful. Like, he, he's just like Marco Rossi. He's a very good player all around the ice. Like, he, he he's on the first penalty killing unit. Uh, he's the Ottawa's first line centerman. Like, he, he, he has a big role in that team. He's, he's on the first power play unit. Um, but consistent impact is something that he's really missing. Like, I, I, I found that the 67's, like, third line, which is Stonehouse, Adam Varga, and um, Guy Damack, I thought I think that, that they've been more consistent in my viewing at five on five than uh, than Jack Beck and uh, Roar have been and with whoever they they've been paired with, which has been kind of a carousel. Um, though I, I do like Brennan Sirizavi a lot on that top line, who scored two goals against the Peterborough Peets, and I'll I'll get to him in a second. But for uh, Roar, he um, again he he has that skill and. Uh, he has some dynamism in his game. It's just he's not a dominant player anyway. I don't. I don't know. Like he, I, not a player I'd pick in the first round from what I've seen so far. Um, I hope he proves he, he he changes that opinion of mine throughout the year. But there's just something missing there, and I I haven't quite identified what it, it is yet. It's just I don't know. Like we'll we'll see. Um, but for Brendan Sirizotti, I believe he's a draft plus one. And he hasn't scored too many points this year. But every time I've watched him, I've loved him. <laughs> like he, He's just a really intelligent player in the offensive zone. And he gets the puck into the offensive zone very effectively. It's not pretty, um, necessarily. But he gets it in there with control. And that's all that really matters. Um, and I, I just like him a lot. He's a kind of player that, like... If you don't know, you want to pick in the seventh round. Throw a pick at Brendan Sirizotti and just see what happens. You know, like I think you could do a lot worse than him in the seventh round. Um, but the player that really stood out to me in the Pete's versus C Sevens game, and the final score of that game was six three for Ottawa. But the real standout to me was a Peterborough player uh, in Tucker Robert Robertson, who is a draft plus one, but I believe he was born in like June, so. He's pretty young for his draft class, so and he didn't play last year because the OHL was shut down. Um, and he's been off to a blistering hot start to start the season. Uh, and he was the most impactful player in that game, bar none. Like, he was just, he was really good. He Every time he had the puck, he was creating something. Um, on the power play, he was very effective in, like, that, he, he kind of, like, swapped between, like, um, below the goal line and uh, as a screen, but very effective in that role. He scored a goal, uh, which was a gorgeous snipe. He's kind of like spinning around and sniped in top corner. It was a very nice shot. But for him, it was also just that consistent effort that was there. Um, kind of just like a prototypical like fourth or fifth um, round pick to me of just he has skill, he has the work ethic. I don't know what his ceiling is. But he has a good foundation there, and I think he could be an NHL player. So, who knows, right? But he's been very good. I've liked him. Um, and, I mean, may maybe he can go in the third or second round. I, I, I don't know. But um, 
he was really good. I, I have to watch a lot more of him. This was the first game of the year I watched of him, so I need a lot more viewings to really form an informed opinion here. Um, but he was really good in that game, and I liked him. Uh, moving on to the Gatineau game, which was certainly the um, most chaotic game of the bunch, which isn't surprising because it's the Q. Um, this was a 7-6, yeah, 7-6 game. Uh, Gatineau ended up winning, and they scored a goal with, like, 40 seconds left, no, 59 seconds left or something. And, yeah, that was wild. Um, yeah, like, again, like, I don't, I'm, okay, I'm trying to be really, really cautious with confirmation bias with get this Gatineau team, um, when it comes to two players in particular, Noah Warren and Olivier Boutin, two guys I have loved, <laughs> I've loved both of them so far, and every time I watch them, I just love them more, and I I really have to be careful with that, because I feel like I'm just, like, seeing how they play, and it's, like, confirmation bias, as in, I just notice the good stuff, or I, I, I give more weight to the good stuff they do than the good stuff other guys do, but at the same time, they've both been really, really good in every viewing of mine, and yeah, so... Boutin is still a guy that I would totally be willing to take a 5th, 6th, or 7th round flyer on. He's a draft plus 1. Born in January, so he's not too young for his draft class, but I don't care. <laughs> I really don't. He's he's just good. Like, he, he had a goal and two assists in this game, and offense is not his specialty. It was nice to see him pop off offensively, but it's not his identity as a player at all. Um... And that's totally fine because he is great defensively. Like he, he's five foot nine, but defensively so sound, and extremely intelligent, uh, very good stick work, um, really calming presence back there. I th he's also, I, I'm, I'm sure he's been the most used defenseman on the penalty kill by Gatineau. Like he's always out there in the PK, and he's on the second power play unit. Um, and yeah, so like like the first assist of the game, he got on the first goal, which was he just threw a puck on net. It got tipped. It went in. There you go. Uh, it was like a minute into the game. Nice quick start for Gatineau. Um, his his goal, I <laughs> so when I'm, when I'm at games, I I'm trying to like not cheer too much because I'm kind of I'm kind of there to scout, right? I'm not really taking sides. It's more I'm. I'm hoping the players I'm looking are at are going to be really good, and that I discover new players that look really good. When he scored, I cheered. <laughs> I, I audibly was like, yeah, because like this is a guy I love. I really, really like this player. And he, he, he got this goal, and it was it was a goal where, I have to go back to it. Where Where is this? Yeah, so um, he, he took the puck on the rush, so in transition, Great zone entry. Like it was, go it was a gorgeous zone entry. He gets it in with control, passes off to, to, to a teammate. He kind of then parks himself at the top of the right circle. Um, it's at five and five. It's not not on the, not on the power play, and uh, he just parks himself there. Five seconds later, puck comes out to him, and he snipes it. And that, it was it was beautiful, beautiful. Though it should be noted, the Bay Como goalie. It had a rough game, <laughs> a really rough game. Um, like positioning was really off, was having real trouble handling the puck consistently. Yeah, but Olivier Boutin got three points, so I don't care. Uh, I do care because it kind of lessens the value of that, but it's fine. Boutin was not only involved on the first goal, he was also involved on the final goal, where he got the primary assist. Uh, and this is this was another one where just he threw a puck on net, right, um, created absolute chaos, and then there was a tip in, and it was a goal from, from Tristan Allard, and it was great, like, I, it was, it was great, it was, it was beautiful, um, I, I thought he was excellent in all facets of the game, uh, Wu-Tang, and, yeah, Noah Warren had a just solid game, right, like, it wasn't a spectacular game, it was really solid defenseman. Defensively, he made smart decisions. Um, he, he didn't wasn't very involved offensively. I, I think he got a, a primary assist in the game, but it was they scored seven goals, so it was bound to happen. Um, but 
yeah, he he played well. He he it served himself physically. He had some massive hits, um, because that's what he does. Like he's he's just an absolute behemoth on the ice. Like he just hits everything that moves when it's an intelligent hit, and that's the big thing. Both Noah Warren and um, Ty Nelson, they can hit really hard, like freight trains. But they're very intelligent with when they do it because it always has a purpose for both players. It's always to separate the player from the puck to gain control of the puck, right? Like it's it's not like it's it's not like the player dumps in the puck and you finish your check. It's it's like guys rushing up the ice or is behind the net and you hit him, separate from the puck, your teammate gets the puck, you go up ice, right? It's always with a very defined purpose and it's important because you want it to be translatable. You don't want to just hit everything that moves and then get caught out of position, right? And both players are very intelligent in that facet of the game. Um, and yeah, I also wanted to talk. So okay, I'll start with, with Anthony Anthony Verrou, who had a fine game. Yeah, it's just consistency with him. Like he has he, he has skill and he can he can take control of a game for like a shift or two and then. It just doesn't come back. In this game, there wasn't really a single shift where that happened. I think he got like two or three assists, but it wasn't he wasn't impactful. Um, yeah, like interesting player uh, for sure. Vero. Um, and Tristan Lunou had a very good game, and I was really happy about that because this is a guy who a lot of people have in the same tier as Ty Nelson, as in like middle of the first round kind of guy. I still don't see that. I but I see that he had a good game. He played very well. He he is a great skater, which is just fun to watch. Um, and he was really good defensively in this game. He didn't he didn't get turned or um, or whatever. And his pivots weren't like as weak as like they they were pre like, like in previous weeks. Like the game against Sherbrooke, he his pivots were terrible in that game. Um, in this game, I didn't notice them, which is a good thing, right? Like, you don't, you don't want to notice a player's pivots, um, necessarily. And, yeah, again, just really solid. And he, he had some, he had some really nice shifts in, like, the defensive zone, where he just effectively took the puck away, and then moved the puck up ice, right? Which is what I want to see. Um, for instance, where's this note that I took? Yeah, so, um... There was a play where Lunou cut off a pass in the neutral zone, got a controlled zone entry. Uh, he held up the puck in the offensive zone for like seven or eight seconds, waiting for a line change, and then passed it to a teammate and then went for a change. It was great. It was a, it was a beautiful play, right? It was simple, but it was important because then I think, uh, if I remember correctly, he then passed the puck off to linemates, went for a line change, and then it was like 20, 25 seconds of sustained offensive zone time for Gatineau, right? Like, it's those, like, smaller details of the game that, that really stood out to me for Tristan Rudeau in this game, and he was really good. Um, yeah, that that's about it um, for him. I'm not sure. Okay, so for Big Como, um, they don't really have any prospects that are meant to be drafted this year so i don't know ravis anson's got an assist but was pretty invisible yeah <laughs> i mean <laughs> it's big homo um the one I, I will say uh gatineau deserved the win it was chaotic and it was seven six but gatineau had 43 shots to 21 for big homo so they they definitely deserved the win um but yeah, no, that, that that's about it. I think my main takeaways from this weekend of hockey will be um, Ty Nelson, just phenomenal player. Like, he's amazing. Um, Olivier Boutin and Noah Warren remain favorites of mine. Uh, Tristan Lunou, I see a little bit more now of why people love him, right? Of just that mobility, um, the, the dynamism and transition and what he also brings in the defensive zone and a defensive transition like it's 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 showing up more and i like that a lot um and yeah and then just brady stoneness being an absolute pest which is more of the same but it's fun so yeah and then tucker robertson being a very interesting bet for a mid-round pick 
this year. Um, and yeah, that's that's about it. I'm gonna go to tomorrow's 67s game as well, which will feature Shane Wright, um, which should be very fun. And yeah, my second live viewing of Shane Wright of the year. Uh, and I believe there should be more this this season too. So it won't be the end of that. And um, yeah, that's that's about it. I hope you all enjoyed this little prospect update. Um, and yeah, that's just my little rundown from, from those three games. And I'm very much looking forward to the next week of games. I'm going to, okay, 67s versus Kingston. I'm hoping to go to Gatineau versus Victoriaville on Thursday. The 67s versus Mississauga on Friday. And that's about it for this week, but that should be very fun. And I'm going to definitely do some video scanning on top of that. So I'll do another one of these in a week's time. And yeah, the time being, I'll see you then.